did a video yesterday about different forms of self-abandonment and perfectionism is actually a form of self-abandonment and I'm going to talk about that in just a few moments but as you guys are joining please say hello to me. My name is Kelly Love, relationship expert. I see people are popping on. Say hello in the comments. Let me know you're here watching the replay, hashtag replay. Um, at any point during this video, if you like what I'm saying or you resonate, please do me a favor and uh, hit that like button, comment. Let other people know that you are here. Let me know you're here. I would love to connect with you. Okay, I wanna talk about perfectionism. If you are a perfectionist, and you are watching this video, you are in the right place. Go ahead and drop me a one in the comments if this is something you relate to. Uh, I want to talk about perfectionism today as a separate topic from yesterday. So yesterday, if you watched that video, it was all about the ways that we self-abandon, right? And I only covered three ways because we cover 10 different ways that we self-abandon in the Confident Queen Academy. And that is something that is starting this coming Saturday. Have amazing women signed up for that part. If that's something that you want more information or uh, you would just want to sign up, go ahead and send me a DM. But a big part of the, this content and being confident is all about letting go of the ways that we self-abandon, right? Um, and yesterday I did a whole video on three different ways that we self-abandon. But I want to cover one specifically today and that is perfectionism. If you are a perfectionist, you're a recovering perfectionist, if you've ever felt like you're a perfectionist or you were someone that literally has to wait until something is perfect to take action or to uh, do something in your life, you are literally holding yourself back from living the life that you want and it will be affecting your relationship. So if you are a perfectionist, go ahead and drop me a one in the comments. So what is perfectionism, right? So what does that even mean, right? So there's different types of perfectionism. But what I'm going to be talking about today is specifically the perfectionism of trying to really just show up as your most perfect self um, in a relationship, right? What that essentially does is when you are trying to be perfect, you are trying to put on this facade that you are perfect. What essentially happens, especially when it comes to dating relationships, is you cut off true connection, right? You, tr you cut off true authenticity connection you are not allowing yourself to be vulnerable enough to actually be seen and heard which is actually a human core need that we have in order to have successful relationships right and so perfectionism in the sense of um you know dating and relationships what this looks like is just either not showing up to a date not showing up to um maybe you are dating but nobody's ever good enough for you because they're not perfect right and so you you just let this idea of things needing to be perfect or you needing to be perfect <clears throat> it really what it does is it blocks you right so perfectionism is not the same as just striving to be your best right striving to be our best selves is not perfectionism that is you just being in this space of being willing to grow being willing to change uh, perfectionism is more about it's just really an unhealthy attachment to the way things look right the way things look or the way things need to be right and so some different ways that you might be a perfectionism or perfectionist excuse me is and th and this is again it's going to affect your relationships but how it might show up in other areas of your life is maybe you're not able to do a certain task or perform something or do something without actually um, knowing that you can do it perfectly, right? Or another way to put this is you don't necessarily want to do something unless you feel like you can win at it or you're going to do it perfectly. Like, this is something I used to struggle with a lot where I'm like, what is the point of starting this new venture or starting this new hobby or starting this new relationship if it doesn't look the way that I think it's supposed to look, right? Or if I am going to fall flat or fall short of what I'm trying to achieve, why should I even try to do that at all, right? And what that did is that hindered me in a lot of different, you know, areas of my, of my life, especially when it came to starting business and I'm not talking necessarily about a business but my own personal experience is when I went to start a business I was like oh what is the perfect way to have um what is the perfect social media post what is the perfect video to do what is the perfect whatever right and 
that did is that didn't allow me to grow, right? And so I had to change my mindset and go, you know what? Done is better than perfect, right? And um, that was a sign of my perfectionism, right? And so another, um, you know, sign that you might be a perfectionism is maybe you take a lot of time to just perform a specific task because it's got to be just right before you will say, oh, this is good enough for me to either share this, you know, or let other people in on it, right? Um, it also could be that maybe you're, you believe that you're a failure, right? If you don't complete a certain task to some sort of unrealistic expectations, you're a failure. Um, how this shows up in relationships is if you have a breakup, you take it really, really hard, right? You believe that you're a failure in this relationship because you didn't, you know, it was maybe not what you wanted or it didn't look the way that you wanted it to look. Hi, Ariane. Thanks for being here. Um, and so this really, really does, it, it really, really does uh, affect your life in so many different ways, right? But it really does affect your life when it comes to dating and relationships because you'll just usually either not play the game, right? Not play the dating game because you're like, you know, if I don't find the perfect guy or he doesn't live up to these certain standards, you actually could be holding yourself back and missing out on people that are really, really the great, like will add so much value to your life because they're, they don't do a certain way. They don't, um, necessarily drive a certain car they don't have a certain um you know maybe lifestyle or or job right this is something that, that used to really hold me back in relationships because i would go out with guys and they had to look a certain way they had to have a certain job they had to have a certain car and those were all the wrong things for me to look for right what i needed to look for was is this person align with my values as this person am i attracted to this person in more ways than just the physical right um does this person share my interests do they have the same goals as i have right and so my perfectionism really got in the way of me forming true authentic like connections with other people and also even my friends right i i limited my friend group because i wasn't necessarily allowing people to just be who they were they didn't live up to my unrealistic expectations and it wasn't because they weren't living up to them is because i really had these unrealistic expectations of myself right and so uh, perfectionism again going back to yesterday's video we talked about self-abandonment and self-abandonment is really this concept of just not allowing yourself or not doing something um, for the sake of, you know, other people. Or it could be that maybe in the case of perfectionism, you're not allowing yourself to really form true, authentic connections with people because you're either looking to them to be a certain level or standard. And again, there's nothing wrong with having standards, right? But when we look at like our expectations and if they become too rigid or they're too unrealistic, what that does is that forms, it doesn't allow us to form true authentic relationships, right? And it's a big deal, you guys, because if you're someone that's out there dating and you're like, hey, I really want my person, but every single guy you meet, you know, the, the way I look at this is if you've ever um, seen the show uh, Shallow Hal, it's a movie, and it stars Jack Black and um, has this sort of uh, experience where um, very, very shallow, he's very, very um, materialistic, so to speak, and these guys that are these women that he dates, if they have anything wrong with them physically, he literally will just like dismiss them, right? And that used to be me. It used to be me, and what I realized that stemmed from perfectionism but it wasn't because i wanted them to be perfect it was because i was so afraid at my deepest darkest core that if you got to know me and you found out that i wasn't perfect that you wouldn't love me right and so what i did is i created this big gap and this big distance between me and another person and i did this not only in my dating life but i did this in other areas of my life where if i couldn't be at a certain level in my job, I wouldn't even try to go for it, right? Or if I couldn't achieve a certain thing, I wouldn't even do it because the pain of failing or the pain of looking stupid or whatever was not something I was willing to face or tolerate. But 
when when in reality that was how I learned to grow right in fact um, me letting go of perfectionism has allowed me to have these amazing connections with people in my life not only in my business world right I've been able to connect with some of the most amazing women that have come into my community and I'm so grateful for you guys by the way uh, because I've allowed myself to accept myself and not just always have to be perfect things don't have to look a certain way in my experience anymore right and I don't have to uh, hold myself to this higher unrealistic standard that is never achievable and what happens is when I give myself that grace, when I give myself that compassion, I can also extend that to other people and I can allow them to be a human being. And there, there we get to create a vulnerable, authentic relationship, right? And this has really helped me in my dating life because although I'm not necessarily in a long-term relationship right now, I have been in long-term relationships. And I have also met some of the most amazing men as a result of me being open and open to them and allowing them to be who they are. They don't have to be perfect to uh, have an experience with me in the sense that go on, go on dates or get to know each other, right? But when you're struggling with perfectionism, you literally will just cut off all of your options because deep down at your core, what happens is you don't feel good enough. Right? That's where this stems from. Perfectionism really just stems from not feeling good enough, not feeling confident in your own skin, right? And so what happens, and and this is really caused you guys a lot of times from our childhood, right? Um, you know, feeling like we're going to be disapproved of, or we're going to, um, like, especially if you grew up in a family where your parents had these real high expectations of you. And it's not necessarily that they're bad people. They just wanted you to strive for your best. And maybe that what that did is that put all this pressure on you that if you were not perfect right which perfect doesn't even exist if you were not perfect you shouldn't even try or why should you try because you know what is the freaking point right what is the freaking point and some parents you know do do that to their children unknowingly and sometimes you just have perfectionism because you just have a fear of having disapproval from others right this really comes down to people pleasing and again that's a form of self-abandonment right and again if you didn't get a chance to watch the video of self-abandonment yesterday i would go back and watch that video it was a phenomenal video i talked about the three different ways we self-abandon there's actually and again, one of them is now perfectionism as well. And that is something all of these I cover real deeply in the Confident Queen Academy, which is starting on Saturday. I've got amazing women signed up for that program. I've only got one spot left for that program. And um, that's something that you want more information about. I'd be happy to talk to you about. But a big part of feeling confident in your own skin is letting go of all the ways that we self-abandon, including perfectionism, right? Because when we let go of perfectionism, what happens is we allow ourselves, like I said, to have a true connection with other people, right? And so when we let ourselves have those true connections with other people, we can see how that we're just like everybody else, right? Like we have our strengths, we have our weaknesses, we have things that um, we could improve on, things that we're really, really good at. And it just sort of brings us in this fold of connection with other people. And when you're out dating, that's going to help you find a partner because maybe your partner is not, maybe your perfect person is not the person that you think in your mind based on your unrealistic expectations. In fact, a lot, of, like I said, a lot of the men that I've come in contact with, I've only met some really great guys the last several years of dating. Um, they may not have been my person, but I've been open to the experience and being able to get to know people on a deeper level and connect with them authentically because I don't have this checklist of what they have to look like or what car they drive, what my checklist today looks like. Do they align with my value system, right? Do they align with my shared interests? Do they align with my long-term goals? And so it's really about reframing um, what we're looking for and letting ourselves off the hook so that when we go on these dates, we have these connections with other people, we can really fully be in the present moment with this person, right? We can fully have this 
unique experience that we're meant to have. And what happens is when we allow ourselves to be in the present moment, you might find that this person you're dating is actually perfect for you because they align with your values, your shared interests, and your long, long-term long goals. But you would never know that if you didn't let go of your unrealistic expectations, aka your perfection right and so we really rob ourselves of the dating experience or the ability to form healthy connections with other people because we are not letting ourselves not be perfect right um we're not letting ourselves really just be a human being right so perfectionism is a form of self-abandonment because what it does is it cuts that connection off it cuts off that authentic connection it cuts off your ability to form true lasting relationships with other people or even just regular like good old connection you know with other people because you may go out on a date with somebody and if you've already dismissed them in your mind without having an open mind and letting go of your perfectionism how do you know if they're the right person for you you don't and maybe they aren't the right person for you but maybe if you're open to it and you let go of that perfectionism you may leave to somebody else that's a better fit for you, right? You just never know what's gonna happen. But when we are stuck in our perfectionist ways and we have these unrealistic expectations the way that life should be and people should be, especially when we're looking for a partner, what happens is we cut ourselves off from all of this abundance, all of this love, all of this joy, right? So hopefully this video helped you guys today. What you can do about perfectionism is the first thing is start just looking at the ways where you are limiting yourself because of perfectionism. See the different, you know, bring awareness, bring conscious, uh, conscious you know, thinking to, oh, wow, here I am again. I am creating these unrealistic expectations of myself and others. And then when you have that conscious awareness, you can shift it you can make a different choice, which is what I talked about yesterday with self-abandoning, self-abandoning, excuse me. Now, if you guys want to go deeper with this, you want to just completely let go of your perfectionism for good, you want to let go of the self-abandoning, you want to learn how to trust yourself, have healthy boundaries, communicate, and really truly build your confidence from that inside place, right? That, that, that place where nobody can take it from you, that unshakable confidence where you just feel good in who you are. What happens is when you're confident, every area of your life straightens out, your work, your work life straightens out, you, you know, find the confidence to go after those things that you've always desired. Your relationships certainly straighten out because you either feel you're not bringing this needy energy to your uh, dating relationship or your marriage or whatever you're in, or you are out dating and having fun and you're like, hey, you know what, I'm a catch and I know I'm a catch and I know what I'm looking for and I feel confident and I'm, I'm just so assured in myself, right? It's really being a place of power and what ends up happening is you do end up attracting someone really great or it improves your current relationship because you feel confident and it's that like it's an inside job right it's nothing on the outside it's not about getting a better car getting a better job you know dyeing your hair getting a little bobo a little botox right all of that stuff is great but if you don't love who you are and you don't have confidence in you who you are that literally permeates from the inside out and that causes so much rift in all of your life especially when it comes to your dating and relationships right you might find yourself in unhealthy relationships where you're constantly needing that validation you might find yourself where you just don't even want to get in a relationship because you're not willing to be that uh, vulnerable because you're not confident right there's so many different ways that this can show up so if you want to go deeper again we are starting on Saturday. I have got one spot left for the Confident Queen Academy. This is a month long program. There's four weekly trainings. In fact, I just scheduled the trainings out today for the women who are on early bird. There's already bonus content in that group that you can consume. This is a mix of trainings plus support from me and some one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you want more information, please send me a message. Let me know I've had amazing women you know, reach out to me. And I do wanna let you guys know there's only one spot left. So the first person who comes to me and is like, I'm in, that's that person's spot.
you today. If you liked this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. Comment below. Let me know you are here and watching. I appreciate every single comment, every single like, every single all the things, right? I appreciate every single interaction on my page. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching today. I hope this video helped you. Again, my name is Kelly Love, relationship expert. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Thanks guys for watching. Take care.